Welkom bij de Katkono Podcast. Well, hello. This is a new episode of the Katkono Podcast. And today I have a very special guest, Fabienne. Hi Fabienne, welcome. Hello Kat, thanks for having me. It's really nice to talk to you. How are you? I am really good and I'm so happy to talk to you and you're such an inspiration and um, yeah I just want to know a little bit more about you we have met in Miami <laughs> absolutely in Miami <laughs> with a bunch of Dutch entrepreneurs and I was the only Flemish girl in the room <laughs> yeah and you, you stood out because you had such beautiful beautiful uh, remarks and, 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 and you were so inspirational and I just loved it. And so I was like, we should keep in touch. And, and I was just so eager to have you in my podcast and I'm so happy to have you now. And uh, yeah, I just, I just want to ask you the first question, which is who are you and what drives you? What is your, the thing you do yes. in life? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, um, so I'm Fabienne Renders or Renders. <laughs> I live in the heart of Europe, in Belgium, in the middle of the country, more or less in between Antwerp and Brussels. And I've been um, a self-employed consultant and interim manager the last 26 years in human resources management and mainly in learning and development. Uh, for the last 15 years. Now, three years ago, in 2018, I became an online entrepreneur. I gave up my thriving consultancy business in order to pursue my dream. So I started over from scratch again, and uh, I really wanted to pursue my mission, which is better leaders, better leadership for a better world better leadership for a better world so that's really uh, what i want to to help to contribute to and so i created and launched the first digital leadership development course let's say the first one in its kind so to speak in belgium and in holland now this was in 2018 um where people well i think that in the in the mindset of people it was quite strange to learn leadership skills online i suppose that now with the pandemic this has changed this mindset has changed because we have been working from home for a year now so um and well in the meantime i also changed my strategy because uh when was it a few months ago i believe it was in september last september so that's about uh five months ago i uh started to work internationally so now i aim uh at the united states Canada, the Middle East, of course, Europe as well. And I even have contacts in India. So that's, that's what I do now. So I um, started all, all over again, once again, and created everything in English. And um, I really want to help uh, female managers to lead with ease, to build a towering self-confidence to thrive as a leader and ultimately to get the recognition and the financial reward they deserve and that's what i really want to help them with um, i mean women of all nationalities and all cultures um, so even in the middle east so um, that that's really really my mission and i think it's it's important uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit silly to to say this but you know cat it's it's quite incredible uh, there is still a, a serious pay gap between men and women i mean by that that um women doing exactly the same job you know having the same function at the same level with the same um, um, qualifications etc 
they still earn between 20 and 50 percent less than their male counterparts depending on where you are in the world of course so this is not serious i mean that this is so um, that that's why um, I, I want to help them not only to thrive as a as a new leader but also to get the financial uh, success um, and not only that i also want to help to cultivate a new type of leadership um, i really want to help them help them to become new leaders and new heroes because um well, as a matter of fact, maybe I, 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 I have to tell you why I left the corporate world. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> of course, I, I did really a lot of nice things in the corporate world, being a consultant and an interim manager in, in learning and development. But the last years, um, I bumped into the same problem. It really pained me to see a waste of talents on the work floor. And by waste of talents in the corporate world, I mean a lack of autonomy, a lack of commitment, a lack of transparent communication. Um, and very, very often by the senior management and by executive committees, because they are really quite far from, from line management. And uh, lots of studies show that there is a correlation between bad management and, for instance, burnouts. So the, the numbers here in, in Europe uh, increase really dramatically in, in terms of burnouts and um, long-term absenteeism. And there is really this correlation with bad management. And what do I mean by bad management? I mean by that, for instance, this uh, old school leadership style, command and control, uh, not giving autonomy to your people, um, being a, a micromanager, being dominant, etc. Um, all of those those traits. So I really want to help to cultivate this this new leadership style, which is uh, mainly a, a servant leadership style, and that's what I really help my clients with, and they they really get amazing results by applying that. Yeah, instead of being a leader, also being a cheerleader with your team, I think it's yes. it's very good to also like put the people in the right place and 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 have have eye for talent and and there's like uh, yeah I, I used to work in the corporate world as, as well so i know uh how this works and how how important it is that you have the right people at the right place and the and the leaders and especially the female leaders it's their special talent to 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 notice what is necessary actually and but 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 sometimes because of the lack of confidence or, or like the, the, the way they were treated by their higher management, it's, it doesn't come out and you empower these ladies and that's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and also, you know, um, it's, it's ridiculous in, in the year 2020, but there is still a bias towards female leadership. And lots of studies and experiments show this. I mean, this is not an opinion. This is really based on facts and figures. Um, so there is still a long way to go. Uh, of course, in, in Europe, well, I think that you and I, we, we really live in, in a very good place in the world. But um, there are a lot of regions in the world where, where it's really still very bad. Yeah, yeah. And where female leaders are an exception or they are like leaders in their family, which like states that they are good leaders, actually, <laughs> because if you can manage your family, <laughs> which is like, I don't know, I, I don't have children, but I think that's like very, very uh, complex. And then, well, you, you of course, uh, are able to lead a company and lead your team. Better leaders make a better world. Yes, but Be yes, better leadership for a better world. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I 
definitely believe this. I, I truly, truly believe this. And you know, we, we have proof of that. Um, the countries who did best in managing the pandemic are the countries who have women as a leader. Yeah, yeah that's not a coincidence. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's so nice to hear what your mission is. And it's very strong, I think, and very important also. Um, yeah. So in this podcast, we, we also talk about riches and we talk about it in the broad sense. Um, so it's all about money also. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, what did you get from your parents or in your upbringing? What was the, the view on money? <laughs> and yes, well, that's a very interesting question. Well, I didn't learn much, to be quite honest, except for the very traditional and conservative point of view that you have to work hard for your money and that you have to save it as well. And uh, of course, I'm not blaming my parents because they, they are absolutely love, lovely and lovable and, and very beautiful people. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in, in a way, they are also between colon the, the product of their generation isn't it i mean my grandparents yeah. they have known uh, the war yeah, the, the the second world war so um i'm, I'm not blaming uh, my parents nor my grandparents but that that's pretty much it you know <laughs> i think it's it's more or less general in in belgium and in holland that that point of view regarding money um, but I have come across new ideas and new perspectives and this may sound quite bold <laughs> and maybe you can't say this in, in Flanders and Holland. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> but I, I know now and I, I really believe that the more money you make, the better and I will repeat this, the more money you make, the better. Why? Because then you contribute much more to the economy in general, to society. You can support charity. You can really make a difference, of course, when you use it in, in, you know, in a positive way. But that really is my belief now. I'm with you. 100%, 1000% actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can do so much, so much good with money. I don't know where the, the whole idea that money is a bad thing. It's just energy. And you can, you ha it also has to flow. So it's good that it, it comes to you and you give it away again. And it's a flow. And, and the, yeah, I was brought up the same, like with the, with the idea you have to sweat. Uh, to get money <laughs> and it takes such a long time to 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 lose that idea and this this is such a such a yeah it's incorporated in 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 almost everyone and to 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 lose that 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 idea and make a new story about money yeah and um if you have money um where do you spend it on Oh, um, a few things, you know, um, Kat, I really love flowers. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about flowers. So I buy flowers every week and really, I, I don't care. I, I have to have flowers in my house. Uh, I also, you know, like uh, beautiful interiors. So I like interior decoration. Uh, I spend it um, in clothes, perfumes, and, and good food. You know that we Belgians, we really like to 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 have good food and fine wines, and uh, and also in hol for holidays. But I mean, I'm I'm quite. Um, how shall I say? I don't throw it through windows, um, but 
I can spend money and I'm really very grateful for that. And when I feel like buy, buying flowers, I buy flowers. <laughs> so that's... So. Yeah, but it's it's also good to like know, like go for quality and 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 just know what you really love and then spend it on that. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. You know, to give you a very silly example, so we came home from holidays two weeks ago, and the fridge was broken. And I knew that you know I've I've had I have had that fridge for years and years and years, and I knew that one day it would be broken. So it was broken. So um, the next day I went to to the shop and uh, I chose whatever fridge I wanted. So I mean by that, I even didn't look at at the price. And when this this new fridge was delivered a week ago, I was really happy like a child because it's it's really a fabulous fridge. <laughs> you have this, it's, it's very broad. You have an a fantastic overview and you know it's also quite practical practical because i was saying to my husband now you won't be able to say anymore that you can't find anything in that, in that fridge because the overview is fantastic and it's really at eye view you know it's 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 fantastic it's it's like uh, yeah fantastic so i was really so happy with this fridge like a child for at least one week i was repeating oh my god i love my fridge <laughs> you know it's quite silly but it's yeah it's like that and so my husband he loves it too <laughs> so he's saying yeah, yeah. and i really uh, i think it's important you know things that you use every day in your daily life they should be of good quality yeah. yeah, it's also a choice to, to, to do that. You could go for second best, but why should you? If you work, you work for it and you have like, if you have, you can spend it on anything, but it's good to make like solid choices in that, I think. And uh, yeah, I, yes. I totally agree that the champagne lifestyle is a good lifestyle. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't think it will happen to you. But if um, I was curious, um, if you have like ten dollars left, where would you spend it on? Well, um, I have no idea, but I I think that I would try to multiply it as soon as possible. <laughs> the entrepreneur spirit is in you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> And if you find if you find it on the street, would you pick it up and what would you buy from it with it or what would you do? First of all, I would look around me to see if someone had lost it. And if there's really nobody <laughs> on the street, then I would pick it up and thank the universe <laughs> for sending it to me. But I definitely would first look around me. To see if uh, lost it absolutely. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about your dreams, and well, you to you told me already that you are uh yeah you're 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 choosing uh things in your for your house that that you love and 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 well you you spend the money on quality things, but if money was no issue. Uh, but really no issue and it would never end um, like you have a tap and there's money coming out of it just like that um, what would you do with your life would it be different from now maybe it would be a little bit different but not very very much different because I think that I would still be working uh, probably not full time but I would still want to add value to the world and maybe in a different way. Uh, maybe I would, you know, work as a lobbyist for a charity or a good cause uh, related to nature, for instance, uh, for clean oceans. <laughs> 
are um, things related to the right to education for girls in disadvantaged uh, regions in the world. I definitely would do things like that. But I would also follow art classes. You know, as a, as a child, I was really good at drawing and painting, but this talent has never been developed. You know, I, I, I had to study. So I really would like to hire a, a teacher who would learn me how to paint and especially also how to make botanical drawings. So I would I would go, for instance, to the to the Royal Botanical School in London to learn how to how to do botanical drawings because I really like it. And also, I'm I'm fond of photography. Um, I have a feeling for it, but I never followed classes. And I consider photography as my hobby. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time doing well. May, taking pictures but I really like it but I would pay to learn from the best in the world so I would hire the best photographer in the world and he would learn me how to to become the second best <laughs> cool cool do you have someone in mind <laughs> no not really not really but a favorite photographer no but I I read about a photographer who became uh, famous uh, his name uh, slips now but he has been photographing um, people in the world people like the Maasai you know um, I, I think Nelson is his, is his name maybe maybe, maybe. Um, I can't remember his name now but anyway he's very famous and uh, so I, I would definitely hire the, the best photographer in the world to teach me. <laughs> I think his name is, I, the one I think you, you are referring to, and I was thinking of him too, actually. I think his name is Jimmy Nelson. So, no, oh, and of course I would also enjoy the good life. But you, you wouldn't go uh, live somewhere else in another country or have a second home or uh, a third home? <laughs> Well, well that, that is that is already the plan so my my husband and me we are planning to to buy a house uh, somewhere in the south uh, in the south of spain or maybe or somewhere on an island so that that is the plan um uh, not to to live there permanently but at least to live there six months per year so we we will definitely do that in, in a few years from now great plans um and i have a strange question for you i i took it from a book that's called the war of art and it's about artists actually and and about how they uh, are so fond of their job, like the artists, they have to draw, they have to make pictures, that is just their thing. And um, um, the question is, what would you do if you were the only person in the world? If I, if I was the only person in the world, oh, I have no idea. I mean, that, that must be dreadful, isn't it? <laughs> I. But because you're not able to do what you do now, like coach people, because they are no, there are no people. But would you like draw, make botanical drawings then, or what would definitely, you do? Like? I, I, yeah, definitely. I would, I would write poems. I would uh, make paintings. I would draw, you know, botanical flowers and 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 plants, etc. Of yes, definitely. I mean, what else can you do when you are the, the only person in the world? <laughs> And contemplating our beautiful planet, of course. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I love the answer. <laughs> and, 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 and it's very funny because I, uh, we have some things in common, but this, this drawing thing we have in common too, because I used to draw all the time and I didn't pick it up. And now I'm like, yeah, it's just a little bit wasted talent, actually, but but on the other hand, you can pick it up anytime, you know, if you feel like it. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice talent to have. Um, 
I want to talk about gold. And uh, gold, your gold, is something um, I see as everything you gained in your life, your knowledge, your talent, um, your insights, your experience, like everything you have in your toolbox. And um, yeah, the question is, what is your biggest gold? What is your gift to the world? Yes. My gift? <clears throat> well, I think that it is my sixth sense. Um, I can sense things and people in a split second. And um, thanks to that, I have a talent for listening and feeling between the lines. I really can feel the intangible and the unspoken. Um, it's not always a gift, by the way. <laughs> um, but thanks to that, I really can ask in-depth questions to my clients. You know, when I have people on a clarity call, really, I mean, within 20 minutes, I feel so many things and I, I already know where they are stuck or blocked but then i i keep on asking questions and then they get this aha moment they really get this insights and they see their truth and i think that that is that is probably my goal oh yeah <laughs> I, yeah i yeah i have this experience with you in miami we were at this mastermind where i met you and we were i was telling the story about my um how do you say it like yeah my my i'm a bit afraid to like be successful because i with my with my illness uh the chronic leukemia is it is it is for me energy is like a big thing and i was always like feeling like i live in a in a in spare time and i felt like i, I needed to like make the most of it because th this time yeah, it's it's a short time, maybe, I don't know. And then you said something beautiful. <laughs> and you said it was a gift. The time I got extra was a gift and I, and I, and I should unpack it. And that was just a magical moment and you made me cry. <laughs> and, uh, and it was such a special moment because that was like your sixth sense and your, your uh, yeah, the way you see things, beautiful moments, which I'm very grateful for. So, thank you. thank you. Yes, it's uh, yeah. and and I meant it absolutely. I meant, it. and um, I suppose that yeah, that that you have been able to to see the evolution of this since since we're back. I mean, the things that you are doing are so great. You have evolved so much, and I'm I'm very proud of you. By the way, really, I admire you for what you do and the way you do it absolutely thank you so much <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling from ear to ear you cannot see it and i'm humbled because yeah it's just it it is such a such a such a beautiful uh encounter we had and it and it's such so, so special that we didn't know each other that well and then you said something so beautiful and so profound which like yeah actually transformed me um and that's a yeah, that's a beautiful talent you have. Uh, so so and you and yeah, I I feel and and know that you can do so much more with this, and I hope you can inspire so many women all over the world with this. Thank you, Kat. Well, you know, I I just coached a Canadian lady, a female manager, and I am extremely extremely grateful and happy uh, for this client because she said that within eight weeks in my program she transformed herself and her life and by the way yesterday we did a, a live video testimonial and it's it's absolutely fabulous it's great i i will share it with you later on um, but this is really amazing. So, um, you know, she had reached a point where she wanted to quit her job and becoming a manager had been really a dream for her. 
And she wanted to quit. She had no self-confidence. She was doubting about herself, was really struggling with lots and lots and, and lots of things, uh, mainly with a huge lack of clarity <clears throat> due to her manager, because her manager couldn't give her clarity. And um, for, for this reason, she couldn't determine goals, nor for herself, nor for her, for, for her team. Um, so it was chaos and it, it impacted her well-being very negatively and you know when when I first talked to her in in, in a clarity call on the phone she said to me and, and by the way I had never met her before she had never met me she didn't know anything about me but she said my husband gets sick of me because I'm complaining every day because it impacts my well-being because I don't sleep anymore I hardly eat and I want to quit and uh, I feel like nothing. And you know, it was really, really, really bad. And then we started working and in hardly two months, she got clarity. It, by the way, that happened already in the third week, in the third week in the program, she got clarity from her manager. She could define team objectives. She even got an extra full-time equivalent which she badly, badly needed and had been asking for for months. And now she says, she says, I'm in love again with my job and I have so much self-confidence. And she says, and what's more, I know now that I'm up for so much more. Isn't it, this fantastic? And yes. that's what, why I am doing what, what I'm doing. It's, it's amazing. So I'm so grateful to be able to, to help those female managers. Yeah, wow. I got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it's love. Oh, yeah, I love it. Fantastic. And it's so, it's so good when you're in your zone of genius. It's, it's yeah, so, sometimes you don't know where the, the knowledge comes from or, or where, do you, where do you get like the, but it's your sixth sense. It's in work. It's, it's, it's. It's doing its thing. I don't know how it works, but it's yeah, yeah. It's beautiful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I truly, truly, truly want to help them. I want them to be successful. I also want them to get, you know, the recognition and the financial reward they deserve for what they are bringing to the table. And most women, in general, and especially especially female managers, they really leave a lot of money on the table because of this big pay gap you know yeah and also yeah well we women we sell ourselves cheaper than our female than our male counterparts yeah <laughs> so that's something i i want to help to change in the world yeah it's a beautiful mission i love it um and fabienne what makes you feel rich apart from this beautiful talent you have <laughs> The fact that I decide myself what I want, what I want to do, and then do it. And I, I really consider this as wealth. Because it hasn't been always like that. You know, for many years, I, I wasn't really being myself. And I was surviving, you know. I've, I've been living in a survival mode for many, many, many years. And uh, by the way, the fact that I gave up this uh, consultancy business three years ago and reinvented myself and, and became uh, an, an online entrepreneur at a very mature age, by the way, <laughs> this, this has meant <laughs> my own um, ongoing personal and professional development process and my own transformation and it has been with a lot of ups and even more downs <laughs> but i'm really grateful now for you know for this path um it has been very tough and rough until now but thanks to to this yeah i call it journey huh? mm -hmm. um i transformed myself and that's what i'm helping my clients with now and um well, being in contact with people all over the world and with people like you, Kat, that's, that's really what I call 
wealth and and what makes me rich yeah oh thank you <laughs> and and that's yeah that goes for you too of course <laughs> because if we didn't inspire each other we wouldn't be uh stay in contact of course so it's beautiful i love it um yes and talking about inspiration um you can get inspiration from many things but i also would like to know what is your favorite book and why well i find this really a very difficult question because there are so many fabulous books out there <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but one one book that i really like is the secret because it offers us a whole new and other perspective not new because it's it's old but uh, a, a perspective that most people don't know anything about so i really find it ex extremely fascinating and in intriguing and by the way uh, a book that i'm reading right now is a book of dr joe dispenza uh breaking the habit oh, of being yourself just finished it <laughs> yeah it, it's great yeah. Yeah. it's so fascinating um so um yeah that's and well there are many 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 other books too much to yeah you know yeah i know that's that's there's all, always one book or like a couple of books that come to mind when you think like this transformational book or yeah like the secret i don't know is it 30 years old i i remember when i read it, it was like yeah i don't know very long time ago but it's still mm -hmm. it's still such a good book and and yes. and the yeah the, the the book you mentioned joe dispenser's book is yeah uh, incredible incredible book i'm now reading another one uh it's called you are the placebo and i've heard from many people that this is a life-changing material so i'm like really <laughs> let's transform a little more <laughs> yeah sounds very yeah. interesting by the way you re you recommended me to read a book in in summertime which i did and that was the big leap and I'm grateful that you recommended it because that was also a very fascinating, interesting book. Really, really great. I can recommend it. Absolutely. But of course, you know, I also read uh, things related to, to my work, related to leadership, such as, for instance, uh, Why Leaders Eat Last from Simon Sinek. Uh, so he's, he's a very good author as well. Yeah. And uh, many other people can inspire me. Many, many people. There are so many interesting people out there in the world. So, um, and do you very can you can you name one that inspired you? Um, maybe to do what you do now, or or where you go to if you feel like oh, I I need to have some inspiration. Oh, there are there are many out there, but for instance, um, I really like Marie Forleo. Um, I think she's very talented, uh, skillful, uh, funny as well, and entertaining. And I really admire people who are entertaining. I mean, I'm not an entertainer myself. Um, I have a preference for introversion. I was born like that. <laughs> I mean, I've, well, I've trained myself to become more extroverted, but I'm not, I'm not a born entertainer and she is, she's so talented and funny and she has grit and, I really, I really like her and um, someone I really admire a lot, but really a lot is uh, Elon Musk for his vision and his dream. Can you believe it? I mean, how can you imagine it and also do it saying I'm going to Mars? Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, he's making the possible possible. I mean, I have a huge admiration for people like that. Yeah. Oh, it can be done. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I love Marie's book. Uh, um, everything is figureoutable. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is so. Yes. It's such a funny book, but it's also very serious. But it's also very funny, and I, I, I love what you say about uh, yeah, a little bit of humor in in stuff. I'm sometimes I take things too seriously, and I'm feel like oh, I need to put some some fun in it sometimes because. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, this is a, a nice anecdote. By the way, I I I wrote to her a few months ago and I got a reply. Oh really? <laughs> wow. Really, yeah, really. I thanked her for uh, all the the fantastic work that she, that she's doing and for the the fabulous content that she's sharing and. This was related to um, a video, a chat that, that she was having an interview with a girl, with a black woman in the States, who has uh, created her own company. Um, she has become a venture capitalist, and especially for colored women in the United States. So this was a, a great story. And um, so... Um, I wrote to 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 Marie. Well, I suppose that it uh, it's her team then who who gets it. Um, but anyway, I got a reply, and I was very pleased with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I think I think she might reply herself. Actually, yeah, not everything, but like if you get a really beautiful compliment. I also shared a little bit of what I'm doing and uh, what I'm trying to do and and to achieve and you know um, and then she um, uh, well one of the sentences was something like oh oh you really are what we mean by everything is figure outable <laughs> so it was really funny I still have this this uh, this reply so I will keep that I will keep it in. I will break book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I want to know a little bit more about you. Um, if you can complete this sentence, which is, if you really knew me, you would know that dot, dot, dot. Yes would know that what you see is not what you get in a positive way the cleaning bracket <laughs> i don't know whether you know what i mean i do know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> i do know what you mean yeah yeah it's so yes. much more well yes and it was um someone in my network who said that to me a few years ago i think it, it was 10 years ago ago or so who said well what you see is not what you get but in a positive way and i i asked him to explain and he said well fabienne when people don't know you by you know by how you look and how you maybe how you behave i don't know but it was mainly by how how you look and 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 how you dress people could could think that you know you are a kind of posh woman or maybe um the spouse of a doctor he said i said what oh, really <laughs> yeah um so um he said but that's not not at all what what you are you are so much more and it's it's true I, you know i have been thinking of this and it's true people people have a lot of prejudices of course and um it's it's true i i really yeah i I recognize what what he was saying because I have lived this uh, for almost all all my life. This um, you know kind of prejudices people might have and uh, judge you based on on how you look or how you dress or whatever. I mean, it it can go in in all directions. And for the listeners, I should maybe explain this a little bit. But uh, but you you have a extreme uh, sense of style. You always look stylish. Uh, your hair is immaculate. <laughs> your makeup is like, you, you just look like a, like a, wow, a lady. And, um, and well, you're just a beautiful woman. 
sometimes people just don't see what's what's behind that. And it's not a mask. It's just you, who you are, and you like to dress like that. It's not a facade or anything. But if they don't get to know you, they don't know that you are like such a spontaneous and just a warm-hearted person. Because yeah, they put you in a they put a label on you. Absolutely. And you know what? What's very funny? I can surprise people because they. I, I do certain things that they don't expect from me, such as, you know, driving uh, on a circuit, you know, driving a race car on a circuit or uh, skydiving, scuba diving or all, all those things that I do with my husband, you know, also uh, driving a, a motorcycle, etc. I mean, <laughs> really adventurous things, and uh, people wouldn't wouldn't really think that. So I I can advise them. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's really cool because you have this beautiful manicured nails, and then you go skydiving. <laughs> but it's just it says more about these the people who think in 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 uh, in uh, labels than it says about you, of course, because people don't expect me to jump out of a plane either. And I did, so <laughs> yeah, by myself. <laughs> so, and then it's like, oh, you're tough. But it's it's cool to, to, to surprise people and to also sometimes like give them a little bit of a pinch, like oh, maybe you are prejudiced. <laughs> Just try to look further. <laughs> Um, and Fabienne, what do you see as your biggest um, insight, your, 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 your greatest life lesson? Um, a few things. In a way, I, of course, I, I couldn't always see it as such, but our challenges from the past are gifts because they push us further in the future on one condition that you can use them in a positive way you know and also you can decide every day to start over again you just can decide this to start over again every day you can change your own mindset it's not easy, but it's possible. Uh, it's definitely possible. So you can really change your own personality. And by the way, Joe Dispenza has a great sentence. I love it. He says, your personality creates your personal reality. And that's so true. That's so, so, so true. I mean, I have been living this for the last three years in my online entrepreneur adventure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is absolutely true. And uh, yeah, it's true for everyone. Yeah. Everyone can. And if you don't yeah. like your story, you, you just need to rewrite it. Think of how you want it to be. Do the things you need to do to live it. It's not a question of motivation or whatever. It's just a decision. It is. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, of course, you need you need willingness and decisiveness and commitment and grit to all, to do all of this. And you know, Kat. I mean, yeah, you know this. Uh, most people, and and you know this even better than most people. But most people prefer to to victimize and do nothing and to blame everything around them and, ev and, and to blame all external factors, but not look in the mirror. That's, yeah. you know, that's how it is. Yeah, true. I like to look at what is, what is there and not what is, what is missing. So so I, I the circle of influence what can i do you know you, there's so much more you can do than you think and if you're a victim you don't do anything you're just you're just undergoing the stuff that happens to you uh, but i think if a lot of things happen in your life really a lot of things then 
in the end, you cannot just sit on the couch and do nothing. No, but a lot of people will choose that option. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Of course, I understand it. Is there's a lot of fear involved. So, so I, I do understand the choice, but for me, it was never a choice, actually. No. Because I, I never went that path. I just, go, I just chose the other one. Yeah. I didn't, actually, I didn't choose. I just, I just went there. <laughs> decided, yeah. Decided yeah. to do it differently and to be strong and, and courageous. I don't know. It, I don't know if it's a, it was even a conscious decision, actually. It's mm -hmm. so funny. So, so for many people, it could be like totally different, and it depends on what 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 is coming on your path. What are the lessons to be learned? And if you feel like learning them, if you don't, some people don't think personal development is important. For me, it's the most important thing in life. You know, I think that we are here mm -hmm. to learn and to implement and then give back. I think that's like the purpose of life. So if you if you believe that it's normal to learn lessons for me it's sometimes still a challenge to put it into something i can give because it's like a lot and then you have to like yeah transform it into something a package or whatever to share it uh but that's a challenge i think it's my strong belief yeah mm -hmm. yes well but I, I I believe Kat, that um, you are one of the exceptions. Well, I I can see and feel a trend now that more and more people are becoming more self-aware. But really, the majority of people yeah. uh, in the corporate world and in life in general, they aren't. So yeah. it really is our our mission, and you will do it in your way, and I will do it in my. But it really is our mission um, to help people to become self-aware. And I think that you are in the, you are like, of course, working with people in the corporate world. There's like a lot of work to be done over there. And and I'm more in in the in the world where the entrepreneurs are, and and people who are entrepreneurial uh, already know that they need to develop and they choose to be an entrepreneur. Uh, mostly it's a choice uh, to have more freedom and to, to choose your own path. So there's already the mindset that is necessary for this uh, transformation. And in the world you are uh, working in uh, with, yeah. actually, uh, there's a lot more work to be done, I think. Of course, I also uh, coach small business owners who lead a small team because they are, lead they are leaders as well. But uh, yeah, well, um, most most clients I work with uh, are in the corporate world. Have have a management job in the corporate world. But I'm I'm sure that more and more small business owners will probably find their way to to my services as well. And luckily, there is a, um, a positive trend in the world and mainly generated by women. And I'm not at all a feminist. Absolutely not. I've never been a feminist. I don't want to be a feminist. But it, it is true that, um, you know, women um, are more open to develop themselves. They are more self-aware. They are more prepared in general of course, always exceptions but in generally speaking they are more prepared to look in the mirror and um, to increase their self-awareness um, at least that's what i notice in my daily practice and um, that's why i i i have chosen to work with female managers only um, a few months ago because in you know in practice nine out of ten of my clients were women so um, and they have a different style, you know they they have uh, they have a different style and and it's that different style that that the world needs so badly it's you know this this preference for 
this this collaborative approach and the the empathy etc and as i said before the the countries managing the pandemic best were the countries with female leaders and it's based on facts and figures <laughs> yeah it's it's an interesting and it's beautiful that it happened because now we can see we have proof we actually have proof fabienne i have just a couple of questions um one is about resilience i was wondering how do you see resilience and do you think you can learn to be resilient i think you can learn it first of all for, for me resilience is falling falling down a, a thousand times and getting up a thousand and one times and uh, learning from all your setbacks and and hardships in life and i i really can say that i had a lot of uh, hardships and setbacks in life in private life um the the most important thing is to learn from it and um to learn from yeah for for the for the best for the good and not to to victimize not to blame etc but yeah take it as a as an opportunity to grow that's that's for me more or less the definition of resilience i i think i agree with you it's also my perspective some people see it totally different but so interesting i think what are you reading watching and listening right now you already told me that you were reading uh the book by joe dispenza yes. well i really love to watch the crown <laughs> oh really <laughs> okay yeah i really like it because there is a lot of history of course also the you know the intrigues and the tensions and the, the dynamics and you know the family dynamics and all of that i i really love it i really like it the crown and um another series that i watched um i think it was last year was white lines that's totally different it's about a young woman um whose brother is killed it you know it's about drugs and 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 money and corruption and and sex it's completely different but it was so so intriguing and so so compelling and and i really like that too white lines maybe if you should check and 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 have a look it was very interesting and well uh, there is another series that I started watching now very recently. It's uh, Monarca. It's about a family in, uh, in Mexico, producers of tequila. And, yeah, and uh, the, so the, pat the patriarch, the father, is killed and uh, he has two sons and one daughter. And the daughter... Uh, is living in in Los Angeles, but but then she comes back and oh. <laughs> she takes over the company. She is designated by her mother to become the CEO, and one of her brothers really hates her because he wants to be the CEO, and he starts uh, sabotaging her. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's it's all all about intrigues and oh my god, very uh, very. Uh, um, not not a positive uh, not a positive series but but quite interesting <laughs> nice nice and and do you also listen listen to something do you like to listen to music or podcasts or i try to listen to a few podcasts but i don't really find the time to do that now what i do is um i try to go for a walk a few times per week and um, then I take advantage of of those moments to listen, for instance, to an audiobook or, or to a podcast. But I'm not really, no, not really subscribed to to specific podcasts for the moment, at least. Um, that's and what was the other part of your question? I don't know whether I answered the question now.
Oh, about music. That was the second, well, the last part of your question. You know, Kat, I really love Motown. You know, the, the Motown, Motown music. Um, uh, so bands like uh, the Four Tops. It's, I know it's quite old fashioned maybe, but no. <laughs> I mean, this is really music with a soul. I, re I really love everything with a soul, be it old buildings, old architecture, architecture or or paintings or whatever uh, and also Mo motown music you know uh, the, the jackson five and the four tops and uh, all those colored groups and bands in the in in the states i i really love that that music it's music with a soul and i love music with a soul of course i also like other types of of music but I like everything with the soul. Oh, I, lo I love that. <laughs> it says so much about you. It's soul music, it's uplifting. You can dance to it. Yeah, I love it too. I have lots of playlists with the uh, Motown music. Um, okay, well, my last question is, do you have any advice or a quote or something for our listeners for the listeners in general um yes um what i discovered uh, the last three yeah let's say the last three years now is that the best gift that you can that you can give yourself is to be yourself and that's what i would like to advise to to our audience is to be themselves and be it uh, in management be it as an entrepreneur be it you know as a friend a neighbor a sister a brother a spouse whatever i think it's really very very important to to be able to be yourself and to be your authentic self and um, yeah definitely that that's an advice and what else and oh never ever give up never ever give up and um i would also say bring your soul back to work because the world needs it so badly wow <laughs> well <laughs> some beautiful gifts <laughs> you gave there um where can people find you how can they follow you how can they contact you they can find me on my social media um either uh, with my company name which is talent makers or with my personal name fabienne vendors and they can find me on instagram on facebook twitter uh, on LinkedIn, uh, on my website, talentmakers.eu. So uh, they, they can find me there. Cool. We put that in the show notes so people can like, just click on it. Um, Fabienne, thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful conversation, for answering those questions. You are very welcome, uh, Kat. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And it's a real pleasure to talk to you again and to connect with you. Yeah. It's really a, a pleasure and an honor. So thank you. Thanks for your inspiration. And um, people, thank you for listening to this podcast. Until next time. Bye-bye. Dankjewel voor het luisteren naar deze podcast. Mocht je willen connecten of meer informatie willen hebben, dan kan je me vinden op LinkedIn en op Instagram. Tot de volgende keer. Ciao.